Well, hello, my loves. 2021 is almost over and 2022 is about to begin, which also means it is time to set up a brand new bullet journal. So weird because I literally feel like I just set up both of my journals for 2021 like yesterday. This year went by in a flash and I know all of you know that because I'm sure all of you feel it too. Anyways, we have a lot to go over and I also want to talk about my new bullet journal for 2022 because I'm very excited about it. So let's Let's get started. So before we begin the 2022 bullet journal setup, I wanted to really quickly go over my 2021 bullet journals and why I chose my 2022 bullet journal because clearly there is a difference here. So the first half of 2021, I used this bullet journal by a brand called Sekas from Amazon. And then for the second half of the year, I used this bullet journal by Notebook Therapy. Both of them pretty much have the same features, except this one is just a little bit cheaper. For this bullet journal, I chose this one because it is an A5 size, but it is smaller. I've never used a journal this size before, and if you know my work, then you would know that I tend to write a little bit smaller. My pages don't go all the way out towards the border. I figured maybe this bullet journal would be perfect for me so I can use more of the bullet journal. This bullet journal actually has less pages than these two. I'm not exactly sure what is the difference between the number of pages on both bullet journals. Whenever I make the switch into a new bullet journal, I actually do end up having leftover pages. And by this point, I know that I'm going to be using a, another bullet journal mid-year and then another bullet journal at the end of the year. I figured this one might be better for me because I will waste less space. And of course, I can use these extra pages for something else. I can use them for junk journaling, collaging, daily journal entries. I can use those pages for whatever I need. To. I would like to stay a little organized and just keep one journal for the first half of the year and make sure I use all of the pages. So now let's get into the features of this bullet journal. I love holding this in my hand. It fits so compact and cute and if I turn this over on its side you can see it has a gold lined edge which I think is beautiful and then it has of course an elastic enclosure. The pages are also 160 GS that's the pretty much only paperweight I use now in terms of bullet journaling. Of course, Notebook Therapy always gives these extra adorable paper clips that also match with the front cover. It has a back folder for, you know, sticker sheets or whatever else you want to put in there. Their logo in the back, a gold embossed logo here. And this bullet journal is one of their newest launches, actually. The collection is called Flutter and Dreams. I'm just really Really excited about this journal. I had two to choose from. This one, which is a faux leather cover, which I've never used a faux leather cover yet. I've only been using linen, so I'm pretty excited about this. And then I had another like dark green bullet journal, which was a suede cover with a moon on it. I figured I would save that for the second half of the year because it seems like a more holiday and fall type of vibe. And of course, the butterfly represents new growth, new beginnings, self evolution. And I think a lot of people tend to see the new year as an opportunity to actually reset. Personally, I try to see every day as a new beginning and an opportunity for growth. In fact, sometimes a single moment can give us space to stretch and look inward. Also, I just want to remove the pressure of a growth mindset just because it's a new year. We can just be where we're at, I'm still the same me, and growth will come when it's supposed to. The new year for me does not signify resolutions. It's actually about celebrating another year alive even if the best we did this year was breathe and survive. So grab your bullet journal, your cat or your dog, some snacks, tea or coffee, whatever you need to get through this video with me because it's time to begin our 2022 bullet journal setup. Okay, let's get started with the inner cover where we write down our ownership details. I just love Notebook Therapy's minimal design. It has a logo that matches the front cover of the journal. I kept my doodles very similar to the entire aesthetic of the journal, very dreamlike and whimsical. I know in my last bullet journal setup, I said that I would never create a grid sheet ever again. And now I decided that I probably should because I am dealing 
with a brand new journal with new dimensions. This journal also has a new number of squares that I'm not too familiar with. So I decided a grid sheet is a good idea so I can start getting comfortable with this new size. So to make things a little bit more convenient and easier for me, I did something a little bit funky with my grid sheet and so I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. So I picked a page in the back of the journal to draw my grid sheet in and I created a very simple grid sheet, just numbers and I marked the halfway point between the vertical and the horizontal outer edges. I used an X-Acto knife to cut it out and then I went back to the beginning of my journal. I made the entire page a little bit smaller by about an eighth on all sides and then I took off about a quarter of an inch from the top and bottom edge leaving a flap of a quarter of an inch on the right side. It's a little hard to explain here so I'm just gonna say I did create an Instagram reel where you will get to see a closer look at everything I'm doing but basically the concept is is that I would like to slide my grid sheet in and out of my journal so that while I am working throughout my journal I can still see my grid sheet without having to flip my journal pages back and forth. The grid sheet is going to be inside of a vellum folder so that it is transparent and I'd be able to see my grid sheet without having to slide it out and I did add a little bit of a ephemera layering underneath so that when I slide it out it still looks nice and pretty and fancy. I slowed it down here so you can get to see what the final look is. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with my creation here. I added some touch of washi and now we are getting into the opening page for 2020. I tried to make this page minimal, but then I kind of just started having fun with it. So I created this tag with strings attached to the left and right side. I created a dotted dashed border for some details because details are always so nice. It says 2022 and yet another chapter begins. I added some floral embellishing on the bottom here to give it a little bit of a fancy flair. And I'm going for a color palette that involves a lot of pink because the cover page has a pink butterfly on it and I think it looks very nice. Now let's get into the opening quote page. I like to relate this quote or these words to something that I am going through either right now or something that I would like to kind of work on as you know the next few months progress. For example 2020 was when I was going through a heartbreak and I was learning how to love myself again. 2021 was about learning to love my imperfections and of course these are things that we're going to be working on for the rest of our lives. It's not like we're going to work on these things for only like six months and then we're going to forget about them. But for me I noticed at different times in my life there are certain things that I tend to struggle with more than other things and at the moment right now in my life I am struggling with learning how to rest without feeling guilty or ashamed or thoughts of laziness and lack of self Word, or even just thinking about all the things I still have to get done. I am the type of person that heavily struggles with moderation and balance and I can pretty much self-diagnose myself and say that I am a workaholic. I kind of tend to switch one addiction for another, then I work on that addiction and then I move on to the next thing. And right now it just happens to be productivity related. So the words for 2022 are, there is virtue in resting, let yourself rest in joy and peace. Because for me it is not enough to just rest when my mind is constantly going anyways. I want to be able to rest knowing that what I am doing right now is actually not a waste of time. That in fact resting is also productive. But I also know that my thought process has been ingrained in me since childhood by all the people around me, my society, my parents, my culture. So it's not going to be an overnight unlearned thing and lots of forgiveness, self-compassion, and self-non-judgment will be required. Okay let's move on to the 2022 calendar. I really feel like there's not much to explain here because it seems pretty self-explanatory by what you are seeing right now. But for all of the people who are new to bullet journaling and are watching my video for the first time, I will say this page comes very much in handy if you don't feel like pulling out your phone to see which day of the week we're on or what day the first of every month lies on when you're setting up your bullet journal theme for the month. I created some dreamy and whimsical doodles up on top and I put the 2020 to header inside of my own sticker sheets that I made that you can get at my Etsy shop. I also created a tab using washi tape so that I am easily able to switch back to the calendar page from any page that I am working on. Let's move on to the future log. So I normally create 
12 sections in my future log for the 12 months of the year. But because I know that I am going to be switching into a brand new bullet journal mid-year, I found it to be pretty useless to draw in the last six months since I'm going to have to redraw it in a new journal anyways. So I simply created a two-page layout which only includes the first six months of 2022. And for those of you who don't know, a future log is a place where you get to write upcoming events or things that you need to remember for the upcoming months but don't have a place to write them down in because you just haven't created the bullet journal theme for that month yet. And for me, I like to keep my personal tasks and events separate from my work tasks and events. So my future log separates into two sections where the top half is all personal events and the bottom half is all work things, which I call content calendar. And then I finished it off with some of my own stickers and washi, which I'll never stop saying my own sticker and washi because I am very proud of myself. Now let's move on to the intentions page. So this is the place where other people might write down their goals, whereas I prefer for the word intentions because I think for me it leads to a little bit less of a disappointment and less expectations overall. I prefer to redefine words for myself so that it makes more sense to me and so that I can process it in my own way and so whatever works for me may not work for you and that's okay. So I can pretty much sum up my life in 12 categories and coming from me this is probably a little bit too much but if you couldn't tell I am an overachiever and a perfectionist. So my categories are as follows. Leela journals, YouTube, Instagram, financial, Patreon, Etsy slash shop. Wow, I butchered that last one, but I do not feel like redoing that. Personal, fun things, recovery, fitness slash food. God damn it, why can't I say slash relationships and hygiene? I thought to mention them here because a lot of you asked about them and I don't think I mentioned them in my previous videos, but I do encourage you to come up with your own that align more closely to you and your life. But if you can't think of any, you are more than welcome to use mine. I tried to make this page very minimal because I kind of wanted to get through this setup as quick as possible. The doodles match with the entire aesthetic of this bullet journal setup. I added some light gray horizontal lines in each of the boxes just to give it a little bit more detail and then some washi and now we are moving on to the period tracker. I actually made my period tracker very similar to my mood tracker that I used for my December bullet journal setup because I actually ended up liking it a lot. I normally make this tracker a two-page layout but because this bullet journal has fewer amount of pages than the journals that I have been using I wanted to take up less space in setting up the journal itself. The length of the horizontal axes is 12 spaces one space for each month of the year so each column represents each month then the vertical axis has 31 spaces for 31 days in a month. Obviously some months have less than 31 days but I wanted the layout to look symmetrical and balanced and aesthetic because I am an artist and a designer so obviously that is how my brain is going to work so I just made every month have 31 days. If only we can do that in real life. I added open circles in each spot so when my period starts I can fill the circle in for that respective day and then I can continue filling the circles in until the day my period stops. The left section is actually a new addition to my period tracker and I am going to use this spot to refer reflect on how I feel during my period. I get very emotional and depressive periods, so I would love to have a spot where I can process that. Speaking of depressive, I also completely forget who I am when I am on my period, and I tend to have very low self-worth during my PMS stage in particular. My head gets very loud and I get very irritable and moody, so I thought it would be fitting to put my affirmations layout on the right side of my period tracker so that maybe this would help me remember myself. So for the coming year, I made a vow to myself that when I am filling in my period tracker, I am also going to write at least one thing that I remember that I love about myself, my life, or my personality. And this will hopefully help me remember that whatever I am going through right now will eventually pass. By the way, there are only two layouts in my entire bullet journal setup for 2022 that I took account of all 12 months. The period tracker is one of them and then my second layout is the monthly review which we have not gotten to yet. All the other layouts 
workouts only include the first six months. And if I'm gonna be honest, this is mostly for aesthetic purposes because I do wanna have just a finished year round period tracker and monthly review. So I don't mind going back to my journal that I used for the first half of the year in order to fill these out like once a month. A little bit of inconvenience is totally okay for aesthetic purposes. I am forever going to stand behind those words. Okay, now let's move on to the next layout, which is all about content creation and content collaboration. I totally understand that not everybody is a content creator, so feel free to use the next two layouts for whatever it is that you do, or if it is creative, use it for that, whether it's to your job or not. I divided my content creation into three categories, which are YouTube, Insta or Reels, and Bujo themes. Here I would jot down any ideas that pertain to each of these categories, and this layout is very important to me because I tend to forget my ideas whenever I'm looking at a blank canvas that didn't begin with a feeling of inspiration, which then leads me to creative block and then a lot of self-doubt. So having a place to write down my ideas whenever I feel inspired is definitely a very important part of my process. There are some creators out there who can create on the spot. You can hand them a piece of paper or a canvas or a camera and they're ready to go, but I am not one of those creators. <laughs> Moving on, the bottom section on the left page is my content collaboration slash giveaway section. This is just a section where I document any time I am collaborating with another brand or hosting a giveaway. And then my products idea page, which was on the right hand side, is very similar to the page that I created for the second half of the bullet journal setup for 2021. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. It's basically just ideas I have for my stationery shop. Okay, now let's move on to my reading tracker. This tracker is a lot different from my tracker from 2021. This is a one page layout versus the two page layout I did before. The layout is very simple and the whole purpose of it is just to document the books that I'm going to read in 2022. The first column is the name of the book. The second column is the date I started it on. The third column is notes or a quote that particularly resonated with me. And then the last three columns are going to let me know which format I read the book in. I have an S for Scribd, A for Audible, and P for Physical. I switch between a Scribd and Audible subscription anytime I see one or the other having a book that I want to read. And then sometimes I'll read a book in physical format, especially if it is included for our Patreon book club. And then in the bottom right hand corner there, I have a key. So S has an open circle and that means started. And then the letter F has a closed circle, which means finished. Because sometimes I'll start a book, but I won't finish it. And so I want to be able to document that as well, just in case maybe I want to get to it later. And then the entire bottom section is space for books that I want to read or books that have been recommended to me. I would eventually like to create a reading journal where I'm able to include a lot more details, information, and even reflection, but that's definitely going to be a one day type of thing because I am still managing to find time for myself these days. And then on the right, I have a page for my Patreon book club. In my Patreon community, we shoot for reading one book a month. Sometimes we skip it and do other things, but I do like to reflect on the book that we read that month because we also do a video call at the end of the month where we talk about the book we just read. And so I have six spots there for one book a month. Okay, now let's move on to the monthly review page. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite layouts and it's not because of the design of the layout. It's more because I love filling it out at the end of the month. So this is actually the other layout that I was talking about where I included all 12 months in the layout. So for each month, I sectioned out two spots. The spot on the left is for the theme that I created for that month. So basically, I'm just going to be creating a mini version of that month's bullet journal theme in that box. And then the spot on the right is where I'm going to write down my reflections for how I thought my month went. So here I can talk about big events that happened, any life changes, anything I'm struggling with or anything I'm happy about too. I'm actually almost finished with my monthly review page in my bullet journal for 2021 and it looks so beautiful. It's just so nice to see all of my themes on one page. I will show it to you in my 2021 bullet journal flip through which will come out soon so stay tuned. Okay now let's talk about one of my most favorite things I've ever done in my bullet journal which I still cannot believe I only recently explored creating. So if you saw my December plan with me you'd know that I created all of my weeklies in this tab system. I decided it would be a great idea to do it for all of my 2022 bullet journal 
external setup pages. And this is because it is so annoying to flip all the way to the beginning of the journal when I am low on time. The tabs are going to make it so much more convenient for me to flip back and forth because I know eventually by using my bullet journal every day, I'm going to memorize which layout goes to which tab because every tab has a different washi pattern. So when I created these tabs, I actually accounted for one extra blank page. I did this just in case I forgot to add in a layout for my setup pages or if maybe I would want to add one in later. For the tabs, I actually chose washi patterns that fit with the aesthetic or the color palette of my entire bullet journal setup theme. So lots of neutrals, pastels, pinks, and even vintage. Some of these washies are actually my own that you can get in the journaling kit sticker sheet and actually also the freebie that comes with every order that is purchased through my Etsy shop. The rest of these washies are from the Paper World shop, I believe, and all of the links to everything, of course, that I mentioned in this video will be down below. And go ahead and use them, including my affiliate codes. That way you get to support me in the process too. And that is it for my setup. Let's move on to the flip through. I think my setup for 2022 has to be one of my favorites I've done so far. I've been bullet journaling for about three years now, and every time I start a brand new bullet journal, I learn something new about myself and about my bullet journal. The more I bullet journal, the more I learn about how to make my bullet journal work for me versus me working for it. The process for learning how to bullet journal was so overwhelming for me in the beginning, and to be honest, it sometimes still is. But I will say that for me, it's been worth it because as my profile on Instagram says, Bujo gives me sanity. So, if you are just starting out, there are a couple things I'd like to say to you. First, good luck. And second, if you discover this is something that you actually want to stick with, then know that everything you are feeling right now is completely normal and it's just a part of the process. Also, don't be afraid to replicate other people's page spreads, especially in the beginning. I'm always going to be an advocate for that because when you're first starting out, everything is overwhelming and you don't really have the mental capacity to also make your own page spreads. I mean, there's probably some people who do it. I wasn't like, that so um, I'm sure some of you out there aren't either and it's totally okay and it's totally normal while I am encouraging you to replicate other people's spreads with credit always credit the person you inspire from I'm also going to be the person that's going to say slowly little by little as you get more comfortable to personalize your page spreads as well cater them to you and your life and whatever inspires you from the inside out you know you would be amazed to see how much your inside sides actually know what they're doing. Okay, so I don't think I've sat in front of the camera and talked for that long in a while, but I just felt passionate right there. I really believe the things I'm saying. And so now, see how I am all dressed up and looking cute? Well, my friend just turned one year sober, and so I'm gonna drive to LA to celebrate her and her life and her sobriety. So I will see all of you in the next one. Have have a lovely day and if no one told you they loved you today, I love you so very much.